What's up guys, it's Dave, and today I wanna to talk to you about what a cap rate is, why it matters to you, and some sneaky tricks to look out for when you're working with syndicators or evaluating properties using a cap rate or capitalization rate. Also, if you wanna stay up to date on other real estate investing or military finance, please click the little like button and subscribe to the channel so that you get notified when we publish new videos. You may have heard people talk about a capitalization rate or cap rate when buying or selling real estate investments before. If you're anything like me, the first time you heard this term, you went directly to Google and searched, what are cap rates? Today, I want to clarify what a capitalization rate and why cap rates matter or, or don't, and why this is particularly important for you to watch out for if you're investing in a large apartment syndication. You don't wanna fall prey to some of these tricks. Cap rate definitions. A capitalization rate is the estimated rate of return as a percentage that a property will produce if the property was purchased in cash. Otherwise known, capitalization rates are a way to determine how much a property should be worth based on the income it produces. So cap rates move the opposite direction of the purchase price. So a higher cap rate equals a lower purchase price, or conversely, the lower cap rate equals a higher purchase price. So, for example, a building that produces $100,000 in annual net operating income will be worth a significantly different amount depending on the location of that building. If that building is located in a market where the cap rate averages 8%, it may be worth $1.25 million. On the other hand, if that building is located with a, somewhere with a 4% average cap rate, it would be worth $2.5 million. Now, that's a significant difference, which is why you need to understand the capitalization rates in your market, become an expert in the local market. Talk through the cap rate formula real quick. To determine the cap rate of a building, you simply divide the annual net operating income, or NOI, by the purchase price. For example, if you bought an apartment building in cash, which is unlikely, for a million dollars that produced a net operating income of 100 grand annually, the cap rate would be 10%. 100,000 annual NOI divided by 1 million purchase price equals 10% cap rate. Now, if you were able to purchase the same property for $909,090, the cap rate would be closer to 11%, but if you purchased it at a 9% cap rate, the purchase price would be like 1.111 million. Real quick, we need to define net operating income for you. So the net operating income is an important part of calculating your capitalization rates, and you want to ensure that you know how to come up with this number. Net operating income is essentially the annual gross rental income minus every other single expense, except for debt expenses, like principal and interest for your mortgage. The fact that NOI excludes debt expenses actually make the cap rate formula more useful. So this way, it focuses on the market and the asset performance without throwing financing in, which allows for an even comparison across the market. There are so many different kinds of financing, it would be almost impossible to make an apple to apple comparison of commercial properties when accounting for how you plan to finance properties. Again, what are cap rates? All right, now that you understand how the capitalization is determined from a mathematical standpoint, what is a cap rate really? Now, a cap rate is just an arbitrary number that people use in a simple way to express the value, the market value of their commercial real estate. In layman's terms, a cap rate makes determining the market value of large assets simple. An important caveat here is that the cap rate should never be the driving factor for how you purchase an apartment building. Don't blindly ask what the average cap rate is in a market and then offer a price that reflects that. Instead, use the cap rate to understand what properties have been selling for and how generally the market sentiment is. Now, finally, it's important to mention that cap rates do not include any debt or expenses, right? We already touched on that. So, does asset class matter for cap rate? Yes. Bottom line, the asset class absolutely matters when comparing cap rates. A high-end apartment complex would be, a, would be considered a class A asset is absolutely going to have a lower cap rate, higher price than a class D asset that might be located in a war zone. For example, in the market I invest in, you may see capitalization rates ranging from as low as 5% to as high as 12% depending on the asset. This is only speculative, but let's assume, just as an example, like a class A asset may be 4 to 6%, a class B asset 6 to 8, class C 8 to 10, and a class D would be like anything above a 10% cap rate, right? So these different asset classes are actually valued at Will be, they'll be different based on your market and they will fluctuate periodically. But a good way to determine this in your market is to ask a few commercial real estate brokers what cap rates are, right? They are the experts. Now, here is an abbreviated overview of the different real estate asset classes. These are somewhat subjective, 
but at least it will give you a better idea of what kind of properties might be valued at, right? So a class A asset, these are the most prestigious properties in a market. They demand above market rents. They're things like luxury apartments, high-end condos, other high-class properties with great amenities. These are the places that everybody would love to live if they could afford to. Class B assets are generally like 20 to 40 years old and appeal to people from all walks of life. They attract average rent, they appeal to higher end tenants, even though they can't really compare with luxury assets. The class C, yes, yes, I just did that, assets, these are the functional properties that are often like 40 plus years old, have slightly discounted rental rates when compared with newer assets, and they're generally rented to like blue collar working class people. And then the class D properties. These are the properties that nightmares are made of. All right, maybe, maybe they aren't that bad, but they definitely aren't something that you should own if you're faint of heart or brand new to real estate or, or whatever, right? These are often located in the worst parts of town, higher crime rates, maybe they're falling apart, they're older, whatever. These properties might be valued at a higher cap rate, but it's because of the headaches that inherently accompany owning them. So what are good cap rates? Well, here's a quick look at the cap rates for Class A stabilized multifamily properties in the second half of 2019 across the United States. As you can see, some markets like San Francisco have a much lower cap rate, higher price, than other markets like Detroit, even for the same Class A multifamily stabilized apartment style of building. As you can see, these property values fluctuate quite a bit, even across Tier 1 cities with the same asset class. I show you this to drive home the fact that a good cap rate is going to depend on what market you are investing in and what your particular real estate strategy is. If you were able to buy a stabilized class A property in any of the markets above at an 8% capitalization rate, that would be a steal. However, if you bought a D class property in the same city at an 8% cap rate, that might be a huge ripoff. And so this is why you need to become an expert in your market and asset class that you invest in. The more you can keep your finger on the pulse of your market, your current cap rates in the area, the more you will be prepared to make an offer when properties pop up for sale. In short, the answer of what are good cap rates is it, it depends on market type, market property type and your personal investing strategy. So how does property type affect cap rates? There are a lot of different property types out there. When the economy heads towards a recession, apartment complexes generally do fairly well because people will always need a place to live in. Now, this makes sense when you think about it, but if you just lost your job, are you more likely going to the mall to go shopping or to quit paying for a place to live? Most likely, and hopefully you said that you will pay for a roof over your head and forgo shopping at the mall. Now, this is what most people do and is reflected in capitalization rates across very various property types. For example, as you can see on this graphic, uh, apartment complex is gonna do way different than, you know, a strip mall, right? Like it, there's different things that, industrial vice, like obviously this too will fluctuate market to market, but this is just showing you different property types in different markets. Now, cap rates obviously vary a lot by property type as well as all the other macro microeconomic factors that we've discussed. Just another reason for you to become an expert in your, design, in your desired investment strategy and market. Now, what are cap rates used for in syndications? When a group of investors pool their money together to purchase an apartment complex, it is most commonly done in what is called known as a syndication. Now, capitalization rates play a large role in syndication investments because of how much a cap rate can, in, can affect your entry, entry and exit sale price. Now, the trick you need to watch out for and the reason you need to understand cap rates and how they affect a multifamily syndication so you don't get screwed when investing with them. Now, let's say that the person you're investing with believes the market capitalization rate is a 6% when you plan to sell the asset five years after five years of ownership. If the average cap rate is actually 8% when you sell, that this could radically, ra <clears throat> this could effectively, let's say the person that you are investing with believes that the market capitalization rate will be 6% when you plan to sell the asset after five years of ownership. If, however, the average cap rate is 8%, that could effectively erase any return on investment that you were expecting to receive. Now, while it is impossible to guess with 100% accuracy what the market will look like in five years, it is possible to make pretty educated guesses. For example, if the market you're investing in has seen significant expansion and cap rates have compressed, meaning that they have lowered and property values have risen, it's probably safe to assume that the cap rate in five years might be a little bit lower than it is right now because the market's at such a peak. Now, if you see that a market has very compressed cap rates and you're purchasing a property at full market value at a 4% cap rate and the acquisition details predict that the cap rate will be 3% when you sell, run. All right, maybe you don't need to run, but you need to understand that if cap rates aren't at 
when you plan to sell, you may either need to sell for less money than you plan or hold onto the property for a little bit longer. So this is a good trick to pay attention to. Watch the cap rate on the exit and see if they're playing with numbers because this single number can dramatically change the return on investment that you plan to receive from a syndication. So the more you know, the better you'll be. Now, what does a cap rate mean? A cap rate is a way to value real estate based on macro and microeconomic factors and the type of the property. I know we've already covered this, but I want to reiterate once again that a cap rate is simply a way to value real estate in an apples to apples comparison nationwide or across market. Don't ever purchase a property based solely on the cap rate. All right? You owe it to yourself to conduct a full analysis on any property you intend to purchase. So again, do cap rates matter? Maybe. Cap rates absolutely play a role in the purchase and sale of commercial properties, such as apartments, hotels, strip malls, and more. Oh, more! Cap rates aren't necessary on single family rental properties and at all though. And you could definitely use a cap rate if you wanted to compare your single family rentals to an apartment complex ROI in an apples to apples manner, you don't need to. I could personally care less what the cap rate is on my single family, duplexes, other small rental properties, right? Residential properties like this are valued differently. I've never used a cap rate to evaluate them before. The bottom line about capitalization rates is this. Cap rates are a tool to help you determine the value of an asset in a given market. They are not by any means the only tool you need to decide whether or not to buy a property. You should always conduct a full analysis before buying any real estate investments, smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm, and consult with your team and your professionals in your market as well. Look, I hope this helped. Cap rates are awesome, but they're, they're super basic, right? And they just provide a basic overview of valuing commercial properties. Don't get so wrapped up in them. Hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, click the little bell for notifications, and uh, comment down below if you got something out of this video, or if you made it to the end, have a great day.